Do you want to start a business, get out of the office, achieve happiness and success while crushing life? This is Boss to Boss, the place to be for that extra motivation to get up and follow your dreams while learning from the ones who have already done it. And now for your host, Miro Wieslow. Welcome to Boss to Boss. What up, everybody? Today's guest has mastered the art of building a successful online empire. Her past experiences include being an NFL cheerleader, Fortune 500 executive, and now a serial entrepreneur, where she's helped hone her ability to bring out the brilliance in women of all walks of life and give them the strategy and support to achieve freedom and fulfillment by building their own freedom-based online business. She's been featured on ABC, Fox, CBS, Forbes, Bloomberg, you name it, and co-founder of Give Her Courage, and author of the number one international bestseller, Unstoppable, Kelly Roach. How are you doing today? It's a pleasure to have I you on. I am awesome. I'm so happy to be here, and thank you for the awesome intro. Yes, yes. I hope I didn't steal too much of your thunder. Just wanted to throw a couple quick, couple <laughs> quick great. tidbits to catch yeah, eyes no, and that's ears. Great. Uh, for everybody tuning in, whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or if you're just listening to the podcast alone, uh, be sure... Uh, to check out Kelly on her, uh, her website, kellyroachcoaching.com, or her Instagram, which she's very active on. Uh, that's Kelly Roach Official, or yes. her uh, business that she co founded, um, which is Give Her Courage, which is at Give Her Courage, yeah. where, uh, which she co founded with, I take it it's a close friend, Amy. Right? Yes, Amy and I are best friends of almost 20 years. Yeah. Okay. I, I could tell. I watched a few videos and you yeah. just. I could see there's like that. (laughs) There's always something going on. There's always something going on. But business is heavy, man. So it's nice to be able to have fun while you're doing it, right? You need to. That's why this podcast, you'll notice, it's very, very serious. Yeah. You're going to notice. Like, just just take away from my background. It is very serious. So, Mm -hmm. So be ready. For for all the listeners though tuning in, um, can you do you mind giving a little bit more uh, in depth kind of on the quick points I hit, kind of like uh, where you're at right now and how you got here? Yeah, definitely. So you know, as you mentioned, I started in the Fortune 500 world and really grew my career really fast to the top of a international corporation, doing business growth strategy, teaching sales, teaching marketing, training and mentoring people on how to build business. And then in 2012, I started my own consulting company, teaching small business owners how to build and grow their businesses. I'm really, really passionate about empowering people to become financially free. And Mm -hmm. so that's really the centerpiece of everything that I do. And with Amy and I partnering a couple of years ago to start Give Her Courage, that's really, you know, a play for us to look at how we can instill courage and confidence in girls from a really young age so that they can grow up to be strong, confident women and be the CEOs of tomorrow. And it's not just girls, you know, it's girls and women of all ages and, and it's, it's boys too. She has mm-hmm. a son and everybody's been asking us, when's give him courage. And I'm like, don't <laughs> worry, we, we have this stuff coming for it's the coming. boys too. But yeah, I mean, it's just about empowering future generations and, and helping people, people in general to develop the skill set and the mindset just to live life, you know, at, at their highest potential and enjoy a great life and, and to be free and, and fulfilled doing it. So that's what I love. Great. Well, and uh, I, I think that's amazing. And especially I could tell there's definitely the passion. Like when you speak, yeah. when you speak in your videos and everything, just your podcast alone, there's definitely that passion for sure. And, and not, not to put you on the spot or anything, but since it's already the topic is here and it's been a little taboo, but you, you probably are comfortable with it. How do you feel being a female, you know, in this entrepreneurial world and then speaking directly to, you know, a lot of females as well? Yeah, I love it. I mean, I feel like, to be honest, and I say this all the time, I feel like this is like the greatest moment of opportunity in all of history. I don't care if you're purple, green, blue, pink, man, woman, child, you know, the fact that we can do what we're doing, you know, I told you I'm traveling today. I'm in the car right now. You know, the fact that we can be communicating with people around the world, building these businesses from our phones is like mind blowing. And I think sometimes because we're used to it and everything's so accessible that we forget that it is like miraculous, this opportunity that we have at our fingertips. 
And that's why I feel so thankful to get to be in the space where my work is teaching people how to leverage these things because mm-hmm, I just mm-hmm. feel like there's so much opportunity. It's just about helping people have the mindset but also the skill set to know how to capitalize on it. And then kind of building off of that, do you think it makes it harder for you being a female or easier? And Not at all. Hit some big role I don't even think about it. I'll be honest, I don't even think about it. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why I've been so yeah. successful. Um, I don't think of myself as being like female or, you know, special or not special. Um, I just think about it from the standpoint of we were all put here on the planet with a purpose. We were all given gifts, like let's get out there and let's get it done. And I work with men and women in my coaching company and I absolutely love it. And I think that, you know, I, I think there's so much opportunity for everyone that none of us have a reason to complain. I really, I really do believe that. Awesome. I love that response. At the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's just a label, right? Yeah. And labels absolutely. can all be peeled off. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. Totally. And, uh, so before you kind of got into, you know, all this, you're writing books, speaking on TV, um, you, you know, you name it. Where were you before that? So you were cheerleading, you were working for Uh some Fortune 500 companies. What what made you say, you know, this is it, enough is enough, and just boom, dash? Yeah, I just had to. You know, some people wake up and they're like, I got that entrepreneurial bug and I wanted to be my own boss and blah, blah, blah. That was not me. Um, I never, like, had the entrepreneurial bug or woke up and said I need to be my own boss. It was literally, I just came to a place in my life where, I had made so many sacrifices to achieve the success that I had. I'm very grateful for that. But I knew I wanted to get married and have a family and travel the world and be in all. And, you know, I just realized that when you have these like huge dreams for your life, you can't expect someone to serve you up that job on a silver platter. You have to go out and create it. And for me, it was just realizing that to bring together all the things that I wanted to experience in my life, I needed to not be looking around, waiting and hoping for someone to present that to me. I needed to go out and create that for myself. And that's kind of the, the mindset that led me into becoming an entrepreneur. Was there that turning point, though, as well? Like when you something maybe happened, something bad and you're just like, no. No. A lot of things. Yeah. Okay. Um, not one thing, not one thing, but a lot of things. I mean, everything from, you know, the fact that I was making the organization millions and millions of dollars, like constantly, and I was getting paid um, nowhere near mm-hmm. adequately for that, um, you know, just to the burnout of like the travel and the expectation and the fact that when you're working for a corporation, you can never build anything. You know, every day you're starting over. Mm-hmm, There's no mm-hmm. like, oh, well, you did this great yesterday. So thank you. Oh, on to the there's, next one. there's there's none of that. Right. Whereas in building your own business for me, like I have a daughter that's five years old. It's about to be summertime. So like I'm going to take off every Friday and I'm going to spend the weekends out at my pool with my husband and my daughter. And like when you're building your own business, like you're creating something. There's there is a fallback plan because you're building it for yourself. You know what I mean? I guess, what if the business, like, did you have something as a backup, you know? Like, what if what if it didn't work out? A lot of businesses fail, yeah. right? Did you have a backup? A lot a of businesses fail. Um, I, I'm just the kind of person that when I start to something, mm-hmm. I will not quit. And so that's not to say that I don't fail. I fail all the time. I fail yeah. every single day. And I feel like that's what is helping me to succeed, that I'm willing to fail. Um, but I just was not, that was not an option that was on the table. It was just okay. like this is happening so you're yeah. going into it full steam you had a plan yeah. did you have a plan laid out though of or course did you of course yeah so tell yes. us a little bit about that did you kind of make the leap you said you didn't just make the leap fully like so did you kind no. of game plan I, for a while did you side hustle i i game planned and i side hustled um i'm a very like strategic person i do mm-hmm. business growth strategy so you can imagine that i'm yeah. a strategic person um So, yeah, I was very, I mean, I signed up and was working with a coach a year before I signed my first client. Like I was very like, okay, this switch is happening and I'm stacking the deck in my favor. And that's kind of how I thought about it was like, I'm going to do everything I can possibly do to stack the deck in my favor. I was making multiple six figures Mm -hmm. on the side before I really, yeah. So, and, and that's the thing I hear a lot of excuses from entrepreneurs about, I don't have enough time. I have this going on in my life. I don't have the money, you know, this, that, the other, like I say this to my clients all the time. I'm like, there is not one person 
that would look at the straws and choose someone else's at the end of the day. Like we all have stuff going on, you know, and no one has that perfect like eight or 10 hours that are mm-hmm. uninterrupted, like genius zone, right? Like everybody has stuff going on. Yeah. So I think it's really important to work from where you are with what you've got, get a game plan, stack the deck in your own favor. Don't expect someone else to stack it for you and you're going to succeed. I mean, the only way you can fail is if you just tap out and give up. Was there a moment you were about to tap out though? Or... No, no. Not, no. not like when you fell, fell really hard. No. What was like it? not? There some, had to be something even, close, right? When you kind of fell really hard, though. Uh, along the oh way. my gosh! Uh, yeah, like what I was mean, the worst? I had so when I was starting off, like I had huge failed launches, bad investments, um, wrong coaches. I mean, literally, like every mistake in the book. Like you make them. That's the only way you can learn, right? And you can't live in a vacuum. So you have to take action a lot of times in order to learn things. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I've definitely had those like low moments, like low moments. And I think you, you have to be willing to go through those low moments if you want to experience the high ones. You know what I mean? AKA the entrepreneur depression. Yes. Yes. Was Was that, was that bad for you? I know that's something that's been talked about a lot lately. Is that something you kind of went through or I'm sure you had to talk, you've talked about it with clients, right? Yeah. I mean, not a ton. Like, I feel like I'm more the kind of person that I have moments. Like Mm -hmm. I don't stay there. Do you know what I mean? Like I definitely have moments, but I don't stay there. I'm very quick to like realize where I'm at Mm -hmm. and be like, okay, let's look at the bigger picture. Let's put this in perspective. Let's figure out what am I supposed to learn? How can I move forward? And that's like, that's how I try to approach situations. Um, because I know that's not going to stop. Like I know those high highs and those low lows aren't going to stop. So I think it's more important to focus on getting better and stronger at adapting and dealing with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. And especially you start to realize it, right? You start to realize you're that like outside of your body, right? Being more conscious and the way you think is what's going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. I'm sure that's something you talk about a lot. Um, and, uh, let's just say now for me, I I've had a very tough time. Um, you know, getting into the entrepreneurial world, I went through a tough, tough, uh, course. Like, you know, I, I went, I was a CPA. I got into the whole accounting thing. I had to be like a doctor attorney CPA coming from a uh, European family history, you know, like from coming mm-hmm. from a different country. And then I, I got so depressed at a point cause I hated everything I did. Yeah. I devoted time, school, yeah. money, like that life in the cubicle was so bad yeah. for me the last year. Like, I don't even want to get into it, how depressed I was. Yeah. What would you tell someone like me? Because this isn't easy either. Like this is not much easier, but for me, it's rewarding. I, like I wouldn't ever. It's back. not easier at all. It's actually harder is what I would tell people. And I do tell people it actually is harder, um, but it's more fulfilling and it's more rewarding and you can make more money and you can have more fun. But it certainly is easier to have a job than it is to be an entrepreneur. I think people think it's going to be easier and then that's why they're so disappointed. But I would say for someone like yourself that's gone through that, I would just say all of those signals that were telling you like, I'm so unhappy, I'm so depressed, like that's a good thing because that's your mind and your body telling you like you're not in the right place. You know, you got to make a change and then that's what drove you to where you are now pursuing, you know, your passion. But I think when... I think when we try to cover up the feelings that we're having or not acknowledge the feelings that we're having, we're missing the natural signals that our mind and our bodies are giving us that are telling us what to do next. And I think that gets missed sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, and I have a lot of friends that come to me with that question. Like, I love what you're doing. I wish I can do it, but I have these kids. I have my wife or my husband. I have the family. I, I need bills to pay. Like, they're like, how did you do it? I can't, you were so lucky. You were so lucky you did it younger. Yeah. I'm 40 now. I can't do it. What would you yeah. tell that person? Oh my gosh. I wrote about this in my book. I have like a whole chapter giving examples of mm-hmm. so many amazing people that have changed the world and are well known, you know, that they didn't have success until they were in their 40s, you know, that failed all the way to their 40s. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's mm-hmm. people now running marathons in their 70s, starting it's businesses crazy. and getting married in their 80s. Like age is just like an idea, you know, and it's really it's what your perception of life is. And, you know, there's going to be people that start businesses at 60 that are more successful than 
some people that start businesses at 20. You know, it's about your mindset and your determination and just your your faith, your belief, your confidence in yourself, you know. And you think that for some, it just takes longer than others, right? They need Absolutely. To go something. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do. Yeah. All right. Well, now on to some more serious topics. When you, uh, since not every day do you get to, you know, talk to someone that was a former cheerleader. <laughs> what, what, how was that like? Do you have like a awesome story for us to share or anything? You know, like how was that life like? I loved it. It was crazy. Well, first of all, I was the youngest girl on the team. Which so team? I, you know, you, I was on the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. I was on the Eagles. Yeah. And um, so I was kind of the baby of the team. I was in college. Most of the girls were graduated and had full-time careers. Mm -hmm. So people always think that cheerleaders are like full-time. That's what they do for a living. I had scientists, teachers, real estate agents, business owners. We had women in every profession really? that you could think of. Super smart, super talented women of all walks of life. And I learned so much from them and I learned so much from the experience. I loved it. I mean, obviously there's like all the like crazy stories the of drama, you know, this, right? that. Yeah, <laughs> of the drama. And I feel like my perception is kind of if you're looking for the drama, you'll find the drama. Right. <laughs> if you're looking for the experience, you'll have the experience. I was so enamored by just the experience. I thought it was an incredible opportunity. And mm -hmm. like, I just feel like, you know, I'm very blessed to have had, you know, the, the experience and it was fun. You know, I was on the stunt team, so I was a flyer, oh, wow. which was cool. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure you built some relationships, right? Or along the way. Yeah. Probably, yeah. You kept uh -huh. to this day. There's, there's girls I still stay in touch with to this day and it's cool. It's, it's a nice community. And it was yeah. a easy, it was a nice transition, right? And to eventually speak it, being on, uh, in front oh of my the camera, gosh. right? Absolutely. I mean, I was used to being on the camera, you know, we were on the news, we were on camera, we were doing interviews, we were doing charity events, we were signing autographs, we were doing all of that stuff. When you start that, when you're 18 and you're expected to act like you're 30, it's a lot easier to go into a corporate career and know like how to turn it on. You know, especially mm -hmm. when you're in a sales role, which is what I was initially before I moved into management. So I think it helped me tremendously. I do. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. So I bet there's some badass cheerleaders out there now that are doing what you're doing as well. Absolutely. That's a good way Absolutely. to start. Huh? Yeah, huh. it is. It really is. But it's not easy, right? I'm sure the process oh my right, gosh. Is to get into it. Grueling. Grueling. I mean, six weeks of auditions, hundreds okay. of girls. Um, it is a grueling process and it's even more grueling when you get in. I mean, our rehearsals would go like five o'clock until like 11 o'clock at night. Like it was, it, yeah, it's hardcore. It is not for, uh, it's not fluff. It, it may look like it from the outside, but if you saw on the inside of what it's really like, you would be like, wow, <laughs> you have you, a lot of respect. Yeah. Cause it's not something, you know, everybody knows about like you, right. I right. don't really know what goes deep down inside. Obviously, there's probably some videos and things like that you could watch, but it's uh, it's it's great content. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now uh, now on to our listeners' favorite segment of the show. Welcome to the round with no name because they're all taken. I love and, it. And uh, if you if the blood's not flowing and not you know it's not flowing yet and you're not pumped up, then I hope after this you are fully awake and you don't need any more coffee. But uh, speaking of which, um, you will have five seconds to initiate each uh, each answer for, uh, oh, for each question. Okay. So right. just kind of, we don't want you to think too hard. Just boom, okay. throw it out there. We could okay. always we could always talk over anything else after. Um, otherwise, my producer creeps in the background, and then I don't, I don't want to have to deal with him. I don't, he, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what he does. I haven't found out yet. I don't want to know. Okay. Okay. All right. Dun dun dun. What is your favorite book? Not your own. Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. I kind of sensed there was something like that. Yeah. Just based on things you said. It's crazy yeah. when you meet people and you just know they have that mentality. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Favorite movie? I'm going to say I Am Sam. Even though it's very sad, it's very powerful. If you're stranded on an island for the unforeseeable future, what is the one item you want with you? Can't be a person. Oh, I was going to say my husband. Um, Easy answer. Suntan lotion, a bikini. I mean, I'm just going for it if I'm stuck there anyway. That has got to be a boss 
two boss exclusive. I, yes. No one has ever said that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna go for it if I'm I stuck. It. Everyone usually says phone. A lot of people say phones, but I'm like, oh no, there's no, no reception. No, no. Where's the if tower? I'm on vacation. I don't want the phone with me. I'm yeah. just gonna enjoy the island life. Yeah, and at that I'm point, I'm going all in. Yeah, the world might be over at that point. So, what exactly. kind of so, who are you gonna call? Exactly. So we're doing a little we're doing a little competition on what uh, what my dog over here should be called a new name for uh, him or her. Do you oh. have a Do you have a possible name that you would like to throw out? Yes, there? I would like Boss. I would like him to be Boss. Oh, I like that. You know, nobody's actually said that. Look at that. Yeah, come on. Another now. exclusive here with Don't Kelly Roach. Everybody. Oh wow, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. How do you drink your coffee? Milk, no sugar. What kind of milk? 2%. All right, all right. I know right now you got the big almond milk, coconut milk. I know, I know. Plant I know. milk, soy milk, you name it. But you, uh, I haven't totally gotten off of it yet, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I don't know. Dairy, it's just like one of those things now, right? Taboo, yeah. too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. What is the one item you want with you consume every day or something you like have on your person every day? that makes you different that you can't go a day without it? Oh, wow. Um, well, I've worn a miraculous medal since I was a little kid, which is like a ring. Uh, usually people wear it as a necklace, but it's like a ring that um, has Mary on it. I can't, I grew up in a very mm -hmm. Catholic family and uh, I still wear that. And oh, I've had that for that's awesome. many, many years, probably 20 years. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. If you had any, uh, you had an un un unlimited amount of money, and you could start up any business you wanted right now, but it can't be your own. What would it be? Oh. I don't know. I started the businesses that I really wanted to start. I mean, I would say, uh, obviously, and I'm actually doing this. It haven't, I haven't done it yet, so maybe this will count. But I'm starting a foundation to focus mm -hmm. on bringing clean drinking water and food and services to people around the world that can't afford it. So I would yes. say that would really be, you know, my focus. That will be my focus as I move forward. And that's through you, through you or through give her courage. I'm starting it through my, m me personally to got go it, in it. conjunction with the coaching company. Yeah. Got it. Cause I know give her courage kind of gives, uh, is we also do. Big into, into that as yeah. well. Right. Just give yeah. it back in yeah. general. Um, and then last but not least, how seriously would you take me if I was in a meeting with you and I showed up with socks and sandals? Oh, well, it depends what kind of meeting it was. I'll give you that. Because it was actually talking about a possible business partnership. Oh, a business partnership. That probably wouldn't work out. Would you throw me out right away or would you still listen to me? Listen no, 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 no. I actually would still listen to you because I'm more of a strategic thinker and more of a logical thinker. So I need to surround myself with more creative people. So I actually would listen. I, I wouldn't make a decision right away on that. Maybe that could be like the last puzzle piece. You need someone like that with the, sh with that the might be. socks and sandals. Say that might be what it is. That might be what, what's missing. Not that anything is missing, but just in case. <laughs> Oh, and last but not least, who has been or is your greatest mentor? My first boss in my Fortune 500, who was like essentially my mentor, my coach for like mm -hmm. almost a decade. To this day? Sure. Um, still a friend of mine now. Okay. Still a very good friend of mine now. Yep. Yeah, there's always that one person, right? Where you can yep. just like look back sure. at, even Absolutely. if it's like something that happens now. Yeah. But yep. yeah. Um, you survived. I survived. Awesome. My, my producer, Steve Wiley, did not come out. The door is still, okay. the door is still okay. closed, so that's good. I like All it. All right. Any, anything you want to elaborate on? No, this was awesome. This was a lot of fun. I love how you run the show, and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much for being on. Everybody Everybody else that's, uh, that's tuning in, be sure to check out Kelly Roach um, on her website, kellyroachcoaching.com. Or Instagram, uh, Kelly Roach Official, as well as uh, the company she's co-founded, Give Her Courage. Also, yes. GiveHerCourage.com. They're doing so many great things. They have a huge, huge following, her and Amy, yes. um, on Instagram, posting awesome, funny 
and good and knowledgeable videos. We have and, fun. Yeah. Yes. Thank no, you. it's it's good. It's good. Uh, it's a great thing. Everybody should check out. And do you have anything uh, anything else going on right now? Any like promotional uh, things or anything you're up? Uh, I would say, yeah, I mean, come hang out in the Tribe of Unstoppables if you're an aspiring or growing entrepreneur because we're always throwing a party in there. I do live trainings, business trainings in there for free every single week. <laughs> and you can just head over to Facebook and search Tribe of Unstoppables. All right, everybody. That's tri- cool. Tribe, right? Tribe. Tribe. Right. Tribe of Unstoppables. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the pol- the Polish me comes out that's at it. least one time an episode. Cool. <laughs> that's okay well kelly it's been a pleasure uh the mic is Thanks yours if you want to if you want to share anything else with the listeners the mic is yours but it's been a pleasure having you on thank you so much keep dreaming bright day guys that is all for this episode of boss to boss your next step is to visit boss to boss.com where you will find proven techniques followed by professionals to help you make that next step Again, that is Bossed, the number two boss.com. And remember, the time is now.